I'm Van. I'm sorry. It's Booby. And Colby and Chip and Ghosty. <laughs> Wipeout. I don't even know why I'm talking about Wipeout. Um. <clears throat> okay, so this, in one of our other videos, I don't honestly know which one. It was in the, yeah. the Death Spell Omega video. So Vin was like, what, it was like at the end. If you made it to the end, the magic number is blah blah blah. It's like an. It was the review was like an hour and 10, 15 minutes or something. Yeah, like that. I actually just recently deleted what the actual number was. But he said, on the next fireside, whoever tells me that number gets like a golden ticket to have their song reviewed. Right. And so his name was Brian, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so you had to watch the video all the way to the end. Get the magic number and then happen keep the no magic keep number. the magic number and then happen to have been there on the fire side. on the fire side yeah. when we do the fire side and you had to be the number that got seen because multiple people said the number and I just saw that guy yeah yeah and, well he got it and I was like no well Sori had had written the number down I saved it she saved it. Because multiple people said a few numbers that were not. Right. People the were just people were just throwing random numbers. They're like there. these idiots. They didn't save it. Right. It's a doct. It's a doct. So, um, and I would have just said no. I'd have said no. That's not it. Because, really? Because oh, you didn't yeah. know for sure. Well, because then they'd be like, no. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, oh. There'd oh. be. Don't tell them your secrets, babe. Oh, I, I have like nine secrets. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have like 82 secrets. I so, know. Uh, Don't mess with that. Okay, so he picked. How do you say that? Sep sepulture? Sepultura. Sepultura? Sepultura? Desperate cry. Desperate cry. So, I mean, hey, you know, when the firesides are there, you should jump on because <laughs> a lot of cool stuff happens in firesides. Mm -hmm. Tell the truth. Um, for time and topical political commentary, you can hit me up at Middle America with Vin and Sorry. Mm -hmm. If you are subscribed to the Middle America channel, you're probably more likely than not to get a notification that right. firesides are happening. Right. So, there you are. Do you, you post are. it on Patreon whenever you do it? I post it on Patreon and I post it on the Village page on Facebook. Yeah, so you'll you'll also get patron points. Like, Patreon will send you a message when we post something on there. So, like, depending on if you're like, that's worth a dollar a month to know when the firesides are going to happen, that's a way to kind of do that as well. Because for some reason... I don't know why, but YouTube doesn't always send people notifications, so. Okay. All right. Ready? Let's do it. And go. I like the sound. So far.
hearing this song live yeah I know you felt the drums right felt it because we were we I kept were... standing in front of the speaker so that way I could feel like <laughs> my heart was like you're like inside I, I want to see this human being do this <laughs> I Igor Cavalera yeah let us see this live. I, I want to see Igor Ca Cavalera pull that off live. God almighty. Uh, yeah, because uh, that's some craziness. That's some, that's, oh my, oh my goodness. goodness. <laughs> Shout out to the big homie. Yeah. He equal as hell, but it's all right. Yeah, but you, you know, you, you kept that inner, uh, in kept, there. You kept and you, you, you <laughs> Remember that time I lost my phone? Whoo. Yes. Dorian had to pray for me. That's right. Because I, I wanted to kill that guy. Whoever you are. Yep. With my iPhone 4. Yep, that's right. That's Lucky right. my son prayed for you. Bitch. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, first of all, I just have... You can, uh, You know, we usually break down the lyrics, and we will, I'm sure. But God almighty. I know. This, that... this was some freaking mm -hmm. heavy mm -hmm. shit. Yep. And on top of it... The solos were badass. Yeah. They were really good. It wasn't. Look at me. I could put a bunch of notes in a, into a, into this bar. Blah blah blah. The beginning was, sound too was like the opening. Yeah. It didn't sound like it was going heavy. It right. Like, oh, what a nice oh, song. Yeah, yeah. And then it got a little dark. And, and then I was like, wait, what? A little higher on the fretboard. It got a little dark, yeah. and then it just went crazy. It went crazy. Yeah. That song cut off. They had. They, you must close with that song. Oh, that would be a good one to because, close. Because like, good lord. I mean, you won't be able to get off the get off the floor after just one song. Right. <laughs> I cannot tell. That's the heaviest song that I've heard in 2019. It's what we're in July now. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Time flies. I know. Village. That is the heaviest song of 2019. Desperate Cry, Sepultura. That that <laughs> was some heavy shit. God Almighty. That drum part at the end. Mm -hmm. I was looking at the time. I'm like, all right, they're gonna chill out now. Da 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 da. Nope. And they're like, you're dumb, Vincent. Nope. I know. <laughs> well, if you look, it's insane. Like you can see the the look. Right. So you can see like in iMovie where we edit and stuff, you can see like the sound stays up the whole way through. Right. It like doesn't dip off or slow down. It's like <sighs> literally there's like the little beginning and then that's it. They go all out basically the whole time. Uh, insane. In freaking insane. Um, what a good song. Very, very good. Uh, sonically amazing. What genre is that? Uh, this is just metal to me. Like... Had some old school Metallica wrist, and I was learning mm -hmm. the, that technique, the, yeah. you know, the triple picking stuff. Like, uh, my friend sat me down and was a lot of Metallica. It's like, all right, da, da. I'm like, how do you do it? I don't know how to do it. <laughs> He's like, you know that tremolo that you like? Just palm mute it while you're doing it. It took me a while, but anyway. But you got it. <clears throat> yeah, I got it. At, at the very end, was that just the drums, or was somebody like going crazy with the guitar as far as. <laughs> That's guitar They're and, and guitar. drums. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't know, like that one where it goes. Yeah. Yeah. So like that's guitar and drums simultaneously. But that is, it's hard to pull off on guitar if you're, you know. But that must be impossible to play on the drums. God Almighty, what an insane song. Good job. Okay. When this finishes, we're gonna have to look at the live. Yeah. I want to see this shit live yeah. for sure. Uh, sacrifice is pleasure when life ends in pain. Conceive the last mistake, which belongs to all. Hmm. Creation of insane rules. All we hear, desperate cry. Death, the coldest wind seeps into your pores. A nation born of hate. Forgotten, distant time. Creation of insane rules, all we hear. Empty maze, despair, distress, and silence. Endless. Endless empty maze. Despair, distress, and silence. A poison vacuum, infinity. Life, lies, deceit. That's very positive. Mute souls end in silence. Oceans tainted with blood. Empty promises of hope. Buried deep, infected ground. Yikes. What do you think this is about? Go back to the beginning again. Dun, dun, dun. Sacrifice is pleasure when life ends in pain. I don't know. 
And it seems to me that if you're, if it looks like if your life is full of pain, then sacrificing your life is a pleasurable thing to do, basically. Conceive the last mistake which belongs to all. Oh, my gosh. What? You know what I mean? Like suicide? Well, yeah. Sacrifice is pleasure when life ends in pain. So I'm assuming that your life was painful and it's ending in pain, so sacrifice is pleasure in the sense that that would be the cessation of your pain. Jesus. Okay. Conceive the last mistake which belongs to all. So there's a mistake that all of us make. Well, if, if it's about suicide, conceive the last mistake which belongs to all. I, I just thought of survivor's guilt on that one. The well, last mistake, and, we, and it belongs to all of us because whatever the last thing was, nobody was, you know what I'm saying? There's a straw that broke mm -hmm. the camel's back in, every, in all of those situations. Mm -hmm. So whatever it was, like it belongs to all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or it could be, I've got two ways of looking at it. One, it could be um, the mistake would be living. Because that's the only thing all of us have in common, is that at one point we were all alive. See what I'm saying? How could the last mistake be being alive? Or, to your point, to that question, it could be um, that suicide itself is a mistake. And it belongs to all in the sense that all of us have, have had that thought at one point or another in life. See what I'm saying? Yeah, neither one of those are things that I said. I no, what one of I things. said to your point when you said, how could it be a mistake? Oh, oh, oh. So, <clears throat> if, if, he's saying, if he's saying that, you know, you kill yourself, then that would be a mistake. But it's a mistake that all of us have at one point or another because suicide is a temporary solution to a... Mm -hmm. I mean, a permanent problem to a temporary... Mm -hmm. I knew what you meant, yeah. A permanent solution to a temporary problem. Mm -hmm. Creation of insane rules, all we hear, desperate cry, death, the coldest wind seeps into your porns. A na nation born of hate, forgotten distant time. So I think like that's probably the control verse in, in the entire song, which is when you're living in a nation that's born, that, that, that springs from hate, yeah. then it's going to create a dystopian society where people do have that thought process to kill themselves. Empty, empless... I don't know why I can't get this. Endless, empty maze, despair, distress, and silence. A poison vacuum, infinity. Jeez. And then it says, mute souls end in silence. Oceans tainted with blood. Empty promises of hope. So it just looks like, you know, politicians or whoever, leaders, are promising hope and they keep killing people and, and everything's infected and all the rest of it. Don't you think that line's kind of interesting? Mute souls end in silence? Like, if you're mute, you are already silenced. Yeah, but, but, but it's a different type of. Yeah, yeah. I just you're think not that, allowed to talk. Maybe. So. I just think it's the common man who's who's never heard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, which is, you know, which is what the, <laughs> you know, uh, I remember not so much during the Trump administration, but I remember during the Obama's first run. Obama ran a very a, a very positive campaign. It was mm -hmm. hope and change and. You know, he didn't really feel the need to attack John McCain because John McCain was, was, mm -hmm. it's like, how hard. You know, it got ugly between him and Hillary, mm -hmm. but Hillary was doing the ugly parts. Obama basically kept it, kept it clean, mm -hmm. but he was running the campaign on hope and change and there was all oh, that's this, right, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and, and then of course Jay-Z, no more war, no more Iraq, we all coming home, my president is black. Everybody was happy, and then <laughs> and then Obama authorized twenty six thousand plus drone bombings. He he was harder on immigrants than Bush was. That's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, Obama was worse to immigrants than Bush ever was. It's not, it wasn't even close. That's wild. Um, and then and then he drone bombed twenty six thousand people into a you no. Know, he authorized twenty six thousand missions of droning people. Oh my gosh, um, that's so many. <clears throat> So God knows how many, how many, uh, how many people. Um... Wow. <clears throat> so it, it's one of those things where Obama was really the last uh, time, which which is still fairly recent, relatively speaking, where you had a guy that was campaigning on hope for a brighter mm -hmm. future. 
you know, the, make America great again. Sure, you could say that that's a positive campaign slogan, but at the same time, that has connotations right. of, of that and America First has, has connotation had been used before right. uh, by by some pretty terrible people. So, you know, Trump didn't run a very positive campaign, obviously. Mm -hmm. So th that's the thing that, to me about Trump is like nothing he does can surprise you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, but. You know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, we dodged a bullet with Iran. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't do it. Trump dodged a bullet with, with Iran, and praise God that he did. Yeah. That's um, exactly what I was thinking. I was like, praise God. But I'm not sure that he's going to tell that line based on the, the type of political pressure that he would um, be under. Mm -hmm. Now, look, I'm, a, I'm on Snopes.com. Did Obama? Did the Obama administration build cages that house immigrant children at, at U.S. borders, right? Uh huh. And Snopes is supposedly the fact-checking guru. Yeah. While under scrutiny for treatment of migrants, the Trump administration has been shifting blame to its predecessor. Look, true. Oh gosh. It's true. <laughs> he did. Um. So, uh, there you go. As Trump, pre Trump stated, Obama built the cages. I didn't build them. Obama built them. That portion of Trump's commentary is true. Images of children behind chain look fences were widely seen at site in McAllen, Texas. that had been converted from a warehouse. Um, to an immigrant detention facility. Facility. 2014 image of Obama's Homeland Security, Jed Johnson, touring a facility in Arizona in 2014, in which the fence it could be seen surrounding migrants there, too. The image was taken there during a spike no. in the number of unaccompanied children feeling violence in Central America. Good God. Yeah. Okay, so this is not to defend Trump or, or slam Obama. It's just to talk about mm -hmm. politicians who run on hope and change. And Obama is looked upon as a positive figure. Yeah. But then Trump is looked on as this horribly negative figure. Yeah. When in reality, they're hand in glove. It, they're the same guy. It, they, they are. Except for the fact I was that, like, I don't know that Trump about that because, refused to yeah. bomb those Iranians. So how can you say it's the same? <clears throat> well, no, I, I agree. I agree. I mean, at this point, for me, I'm saying for me personally, Trump is better than Obama if you value human life. Oh, I totally agree. If yeah. you value human life, that's the way I'm seeing you it. You gotta see it, you gotta see it Trump on the wrong. Yeah. Now, but on the other side, of course, you've got the whole um, Medicare for all situation that Trump is decidedly against. And of course, mm -hmm. Obamacare left 30 million people still uninsured. Oh, yeah. but at least Obama was trying. See, that's the thing, it's like at least he was trying to solve the problem. I know a lot of people criticize Obama because you know, he left 30 million people uninsured. Yeah, but that means that he had, what, 400 and or right. 370 million people were insured. Then. Right. So 30 million is a huge number. I get it. But my point is, it's like, okay, on health care, I love Obama. On foreign policy, I hate him. Mm -hmm. I think it was terrible what we did to those people. And uh, so, yeah. as far as how we treat immigrants, I mean, they're the same. They're the same. He built them. Snopes said so. But we're so bipartisan, we're, but we're so like partisan and, and tribalistic that we can't just see facts for facts. You're, I'm <clears throat> not sure, like, I don't really know enough about these, these things. Like they're locking people in there or are they, are they doing it for like crowd control? Are they, you know well, what I mean? No, like, they're, they're, they're there illegally because we don't have an open border policy. Yeah. So if you get caught. You go and there. you got to get sent for processing, then you go there. And, you know, you can, you know. I see. You, so, I see. but. It's kind of like a jail. Yeah, I was like, and, is it? And no. Obama, I mean, there's interviews where Obama says, don't bring your kids over here. And he said, like, he basically, he almost explicitly said, like, you might not go back with them. He said it. Yeah, but these people are obviously in a desperate situation. Of course. That's why they're even doing it. In but the first they, place. they, they. But what I'm, the, what kills me about partisan politics is that these people get used as props for people's political ploys. If they, if you really cared about the cages and things of that nature, then you would. Why weren't you talking about it when when Obama did it? Right. Oh no, I agree. 
And, yeah. and then on the other side, what's funny with the Republicans is like, well, the thing started with, with Obama. Then why were the Repu why were the Republicans? Remember we had that radio debate one time, and that Republican guy was saying that Obama was just letting everybody in through mm -hmm. the border. Yeah. So during the Obama administration, they didn't. They never said, "Oh, he's building facilities so that he." No, can I never heard that. He was act. They were all the Republicans were acting like Obama was just letting everybody into the country. But now yeah. the Republicans are saying, "Well, Obama built the." Right. The, well, why weren't you saying that right. before? Right. Right. Exactly. Good point. And yeah. same thing with the Democrats. With the Democrats, now you want to go after Trump and say that he's a horrible person because he's cages. Your man Obama built them. Why weren't you saying it before? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know why. Because you don't give a damn about those people. Right. They're just pawns in your political game. So that's when, pretty bad when, when people's when, situations become right. your. When Obama, when, when the Republicans start. wanted to stoke all this xenophobia about the uh, about this invasion of these Mexicans coming across our borders, yeah. you never heard once that Obama had built cages to catch those no. people. No, nope. you never heard once that Obama told those those people not to bring their kids over here. You right. never heard Republicans say that. They just they were acting like Obama was just letting them yeah. in. But now, because Trump has the criticism about the cages, now they're saying, "Hey, it was your man Obama." See, both of these it's people so are dishonest. full. Of, both of these people are full of shit. That's so dishonest. They're evil as hell. Both of them. That, that's why it's like the 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 strict loyalty to one specific party in America is stupid. Mm. Like these people are lying to our face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like they're not even trying to pretend. This shit is on camera. It's right. on camera. Right. They're not even trying to pretend. But then you know we stupidly every four years believe in these people. It's insane. <sighs> So that that's what got me, which is en empty promises of hope. And I, yeah. I think, you know, I've been harder on Obama. You know, if you if you balance it out, I've been harder on Obama than I've been on Trump. And mm -hmm. the reason is not because um, I am I am a conservative. As a matter of fact, in the last fireside, people were saying that I'm I'm a basically I'm a pro life leftist. Mm -hmm. That's what they said. Mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't care I about labels. I can see how they would say that. <clears throat> but the reason I'm harder on Obama than Trump is because Trump came out in his in his uh, candidacy, and he was he was stoking violent reactions. He was saying things like, "If you beat the hell out he of them, their their bills." Yeah. Right, right. So he wasn't Lawyer pretending fees. that he was going to raise us up, but right. But Obama was. Obama was talking about uh, uh, Abu Ghraib. He was talking about. Um, uh, Guantanamo, he's gonna let everybody out, blah blah blah, and he didn't do any of that shit. Mm -hmm. And and we were supposed to get out of these wars, and he 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 ginned up the wars, and of course all the drone bombings and the indiscriminate killing of civilians mm -hmm. over there in Afghanistan. So it's like that's why I'm hard when when the subject of Obama comes up, I'm much harder on Obama because he ran on this messianic platform. Right. Trump didn't run on a messianic right. platform. Right. No, Trump hey, ran, that's a good point. Trump yeah. ran on a xenophobic platform. So if he does mistreat people, I'm not going to go, oh my God, what a hypocrite. Yeah. I'm going to go, well, he said. Right. He, when he came down the escalator. He, he wasn't pretending. Yeah. On the Simpsons episode, he was talking about how horrible Mexicans were and then their rapists and killers and all this other shit. Like, so he put it out there like, look, this is the thing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be xenophobia. It's going to be, yeah. it's going to be every type of phobia is long. You know, we're going to tell Muslims they can't come in here. Like, he it was explicit about what he was going to do to the national conversation in the country, which is bring it down. Lion Ted, low energy right. Jeb, you know, lock Hawking her, and lock her up, them. beating people up at his, at his, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, which, beating people up at, at his rallies, which I guess, BM fan, that's okay because those black guys were being antagonistic, right. so that means it's okay, right? Isn't that true? Isn't that what you said? But anyway, um, it, so we knew... You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But with Obama, it, even I got, I was like, oh shit, man. To him, by surprise. It was, it was it, you weren't in a politics at the time. No. But it was a very refreshing moment in American politics where the last time it was this exciting, in my memory, when, was when Clinton was running. When Clinton was running and the economy stupid and he was playing the saxophone on the Arsenio Hall show and we were like, yo, shit, we got a black president. You know, and he was, I smoked, but I didn't inhale. Then he gave you a little wink. Oh, yeah. So it was like, it was really, really exciting because we'd never seen anything like it before. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, in the black community, and my mom loved Clinton. She loved him. She's like, y'all believe, Mr. Bush, y'all believe. 
Go on, Miss Bush. Really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She loved Clinton. Loved him. Everybody loved. Him. Ladies loved Clinton until all that shit came out. Then you know. Wow. Well, actually, in the '90s, Clinton got a lot of like breaks from women. People would really? yeah, yeah. Like he wouldn't be able to survive it now in the in the in the yeah. Me Too context. Yeah. But before, they they like Clinton could do no wrong. Mm-hmm. Wow. So uh, all, all, not in my household. <laughs> all, all right. All I'm saying is that you know like. That line right there, empty promises of hope, and you're talking about mutils and ending in silence, which a lot of the people in the Rust Belt, you know, felt that way. And I bet. You know, Michael Moore did a really cool documentary, um, like right before, because Michael Moore saw this, ha saw what was about to happen oh, with really? Trump. Yeah, he did a really cool because he was he's from like Minnesota or Nebraska or something, and he shot this video where he was explaining the mindset of these people and he was basically saying look you've been ignored by us for the last 10 years but don't don't say fuck you this way which was Trump and he was he, he was right mm -hmm. everybody was laughing at him but he was right and so um, so this song to me is like tapping into that feeling of the common man like mm -hmm. you're muted mm -hmm. and you're silenced and there's so many different ways that the common man gets silenced in a given milieu mm -hmm. And now, forget it. You can't say anything. You're racist. You're homophobic. Oh, you're transphobic. You're yeah. Islamophobic. You're everything phobic. If you say anything, like it's such it's such a terrible way of trying to change things because now, basically, what you've done is you've created a society of liars. Right. That that's so true. You know. That's so true because a lot of people have to act like they're good with something, or they right. have to act like they understand something right. when they really don't. And now there's not even room for you to, to, to even ask questions. That? Yeah. You can't even ask questions. Mm -mm. Which that's why I like, you know, as as the, the, the black the accessible black guy, you know, I create situations where people are allowed to ask me questions even if they sound racist. Mm -hmm. They are racist most of the time. But I create that because how else are people gonna and I have trans friends where I go, hey you know, mm -hmm. like, where I say, hey, I'm going to pull one of my, you're my trans friend card, so yeah. I'm going to ask you this question. And, yeah. You know, so um, yeah. it, it's it's crazy. A poison vacuum. Infinity. Life lies deceit. You know, like, mm -hmm. it creates yeah. that, type of, that type of society. But then the human spirit is such that, you know, people are not going to stay silent forever, and they're going to have a desperate cry, and it's going to yeah. manifest in... Jews will not replace us, or it's going to manifest in, you know, a vote, or it's going to manifest in, in some form of violence or whatever. Mm -hmm. The people need to be listened to. Yeah. You know, and, and it's like, you don't, and think about it, it says desperate cry. You don't start off yelling. Right. People start off speaking, but when they're not, when they feel they can't be heard, then they escalate their voice. So, yeah, and <clears throat> the other thing, too, is like, I don't know, especially, like, for me, like, I'll, if I'm like, you know, trying to talk and then my voice gets probably, more, you know, more escalated and then I get like angry sounding and like when I feel like I can't get anywhere and I'm not being understood, then I end up crying. So like that's the desperate <laughs> cry, you know what I mean? Like this is so frustrating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when you go on Facebook. I was a big see. crier when I was a kid. You were? I, every oh, time yeah, I get angry, oh yep. my gosh, I would, yeah. Yeah. It's Johan. Yeah, yeah. Then my brother would grab me because I was going to go after Jamie. I don't care if I get in trouble! And he would snatch me because I was about to push Jamie through the wall. <laughs> oh, God. True story. The rest is too gory. Um, good song. Written in 1991, still relevant in 2019. How real is that? 9.3 How real me. is that? It's a 10 for me. I knew it was going to be a 10 this song, this song, This song is a 10 and a half, actually. Can't give it an 11 because 11 is really, really, really elite status. But the musicianship in this song was insane. Yeah, it was. God almighty. So, it's a 10.5 for me. Then out. Sorry, out. Gone.